tries to change this particular style of play. Of course, they did meet, I think, earlier this year, and uh, Jocko won that fairly easily. Well, that's right. He won it fairly easily, but uh, from the US Open onwards, we have seen uh, Dong Zhuang playing a different sort of game altogether. OK, well, it's going to be a great match. Uh, Asia Cup last year in Beijing when uh, he beat Jocko uh, in the semi-final in the final. Uh, at the time, actually, anybody heard of Dong Zhuang. In fact, uh, as we see here, semi-finals in the Chinese Open uh, has had four victories this year, including the Asia Cup, which was his big win uh, of the year, and the World Cup a couple of months back. But a very late starter on the World Circuit, uh, if I may say so. I mean, it's only about three years back uh, that Joko started winning. And 93 and 94 were well, tremendous years for Joko when he became world number one. But before that, he used to be just around the first or second round uh, loser, but uh, player Tremendous experience and tremendous court craft, and I'm sure he's going to show a lot of that today. Well, you mentioned the Asia Cup victory he had. That was in Qingdao. We saw that on uh, Prime Sports. Magnificent uh, atmosphere in the stadium when Joko came through. And uh, I think he seemed to remember his comment afterwards. He said, maybe I've proved I'm not too old for the Olympics. So he's obviously got his mind set on going to Atlanta next year. Well, there's, lot of, there's been a lot of talk about uh, the Thomas Cup as well, and uh, the Indonesians have... Uh, got this uh, habit of trying to take in the younger players. Well, Joko Suprianto is uh, so undefeated so far in this group, as is uh, Dong Jian, uh, Jaron Van Dijk and Tan Xian Peng, the local man, have uh, got the worst end of their point. 50 points uh, against uh, Jaron Van Dijk and Tan Xian Peng, they've yet to uh, not won a set. Yeah, and, uh, an absolutely clean record for Joko and Dong Jian. So it's appropriate this uh, third day sees the uh, decider here. One or two of the groups already decided uh, on yesterday's results. Put this one alive right to the end. As we mentioned, Adi Wiranata, that went uh, three very gruelling sets against Alan Budi Kasuma, the Olympic champion. That was uh, played just a little bit earlier prior to this broadcast. You had someone like an Ardi Wiranata playing Joko. I mean, Ardi likes to keep the uh, keep the rallies going, play long, hard rallies, punish the uh, physically punish his opponent, take it into a third set. Now, Dong John might be lured into a, you know that sort of tactic. Well, I don't know. It may be it may be dangerous. That's not his game. Well, that's one great thing about Joko, Brian, is that he's able to change his game to suit uh, the style. You know, and. Uh when you, when you see him play against RD, he would be the aggressor. He would be the one who would try to finish off the rally early, uh, trying to break the rhythm of RD. But when he's playing against Dong Jong, he would not allow Dong Jong to go in for attack. I mean, that's the sort of strategy that he likes to play. Always thinking, always on the move. And as I said early on, he's a very cunning player on court. He already has uh, got a big lead, the 4-1, in the initial stages of this first game. That's the sort of stroke uh, that he plays right on the body of Dong Jung there, keeping the China man on the move and a lovely drop shot to finish off that rally. A lot of deception in that stroke, brushing the shuttle down. Well, I'll just have a look at this. Jocko, a very aggressive position on court. A lovely angled smash, just, uh, well, half smash. Pace taken off it, great deception. In very quickly for the kill, 6-1, first set, it's been a good start for Joko Suprianto.
prior to that win in Chengdu earlier this year, uh, many of his fans, and I'm sure the Federation were getting a little bit worried because he hadn't won a tournament uh, since uh, Thailand last year. That's right, and then he has made amends, hasn't he? <laughs> he has won the Konega Cup, and he won the Asia Cup, uh, he won the World Cup, which was a big one. And uh, in the China Open, he lost to Paul Eric Hoy Larson in the semi-finals. So he's been having a good time since the Asia Cup. But very interesting uh, battle on court here. Uh, Joko keeping uh, the attack away from Dong Zhang all the time. The shuttle going in very awkward angles for the young Chinese player. Middle of the court serve there, one of the rare mistakes that Joko has made and instantly punished by Dong Jiang. We've had an update on Mia Udina, incidentally. She's been to the hospital. Uh, it's not a hamstring problem, but it's uh, apparently her knee that caused her problems. She was actually at match point against her opponent and uh, had to withdraw on match points. So it's a terrible shot for the 16-year-old Indonesian girl. Miodina was playing Wang Chen of China. There he is, Joko. Typical of him. He's tried. He's slowed down the rally so much. High lobs. And perfect length is always keeping uh, Dong Jong pinned to the baseline there all the time. It's very surprising, Brian, that in badminton, which is really considered to be a young man's sport, uh, we have got uh, three players almost 30 years old who are, in fact, uh, leading the world rankings. Paul Eric Hoyle Larson at 30, Joko at 30, and then we had Jens Olsen of Sweden, also 30 years old. Well, it's good to know you're not on the scrap heap <laughs> after 25. That's right. Well, of course, you do get the, the sort of the characters with the longevity in all sports. You make the comparison with tennis. You've got Jimmy Connors still competing at the very highest level at uh, 39. Yeah. Martina. Martina, of course. Oh. Seven, seven. One, seven. But of the top five players in tennis, uh, would there be anybody around this age? No. No, they're all Agassi, Sampras, uh, even Izovic, all mid-20s, you know, 25, 26. Michael Chang, 25. Oh, it's a wonderful exchange. Well, he broke his racket there. In fact, he knew it uh, when the shuttle dipped down that the pressure had eased off the bird. But uh, somehow Joko managed to keep that in play. There we see it coming. Beautiful block shot. There it goes. Just rolling off the tape. Well, that's the way to hit it. Right off the middle, right off the centre of the frame. When the strings are gone. That's interesting noise. Uh, again, uh, going in for an early attack. Low service there. Didn't quite come off. Uh, Joko, but uh, the intention clearly to keep uh, Dong Jiang on defense. And the Chinaman uh, does not relish playing defensive badminton at all. That's a bit more like it. Great uh, leap and a terrific smash from Dong Jiang. Watch this as it comes from the camera behind Dong Jiang here. Perfectly balanced falling away and uh, getting the balance with his legs, the, the scissor kick so that he's perfectly in position as soon as he lands to play the next shot. Two smashes worked in succession there. Jerko still 7-2 up with Dong John serving. Nice 
nicely played the middle of the court. A good slice on the shuttle, kept the pace off the shuttle. And uh, keeping in the court there, Joko. He's one of the only players, uh, Brian, on the circuit who will go for every single stroke in the book. He's not afraid to experiment, not afraid to innovate. John being pushed to the back and uh, as you said he doesn't seem to like this uh, defensive type of play perfect length and uh, he's won the last two points on those sort of smashes but not the third time well, that looked out Again, push from one uh, angle to his deep backhand there. Uh, and Dong Jong clearly not uh, liking what is happening on court. He really has to keep the shuttle down, uh, Brian. He has to keep the lobs very low if he has to push Joko to the baseline. Return. Taking the service very late there, Joko. There we see it, and a very awkward return. Caught right in the middle of the court by Dong Jong with just one single leap. Back live now. Service has gone back to Joko Suprianto. 9 3 he leads, first set. That's about the first mistake that Joko's made in this first set. That's right, and uh, the way these players keep on uh, looking up, in fact, Rashid yesterday was looking up, I think there's a little problem with the lights, you know, they keep on missing the sight of the shuttle at times. I wonder if it's also happening on the other courts. Oh, a wonderful reaction on the backhand from Dong Jian. Absolute instinct and reflex. Gave him the point. Watch this. This is a wonderful shot from Dong Jian. No fluke about that at all. Look at it from this uh, corner angle. He flicks the shuttle right back towards the camera. Here's the smash coming up. And then the flick into the open court with Joko stranded on the forehand side. and smash there. The shuttle hit a little bit slowly and Joko obviously not realizing that tried to brush it off and there was no rebound. But Joko very nicely is keeping uh, Dong Jiang guessing all the time on the service. Uh, low backhand followed by high serves. It is high. Finished there by Don Jong. First, a quick smash into the body, and he rushed in, seeing that shuttle high on the net. There we see it coming. That was the one straight into the body from this angle, and a quick run to the net. The kill set up by the shot that preceded it. Dong Jong really had 
uh, control of that rally all the way. Looks as though he, he's uh, getting into a bit of a rhythm. Only four points separate the two in the first set. A good drop shot there, uh, Brian. Very nicely deceiving Joko there. Getting in position for a smash and then brushing it off for the cross court drop shot. Back live, Joko just uh, hit a smash wide to give Dong John another point. 7 10. Time Joko going on the offensive. <laughs> Quick dial down the chair umpire there, keeping an eye on things. He's got to make sure that uh, play is continuous, but as we mentioned before, using their discretion. In the it's a bit unrealistic so, to yeah. expect players not to take on water or towel off during a, a long and grueling set. Well, at times they call the players back in uh, when they realise that uh, the toweling off is more of a tactics than the actual need. Nice spin shot and a good opening there for Joko. Well, on the net, definitely the Indonesian player plays with a lot more control than Dong Jong. And uh, there he will see him on this shot. Look at that spin shot, just catching the tape and setting up this lovely opening there. Easy finish. John thought he was going to be able to return the compliment there. They clear, the high clear from Joko Suprianto at the net. Here's the drop. Rather, that was uh, the final shot. And again, Joko must be on the net. He just knows how much pressure is to be put on that shuttle there just to roll it over the tape and uh, really makes things so much difficult for his opponents what's the precision on this now that's twice we've had the close-ups there twice he's hit the tape and it's just dropped down absolutely no fluke about that whatsoever great returns by Joko Corner to corner, making the Chinese move. Lovely defensive play. I think he's reading his smashes so accurately that he just moves in, steps in before the shuttle comes to that place. Game point for Joko Suprianto. Wonderful shot from Dong John, full of deception. You could have half expected him to try and hit his way out of trouble. Not a bit of it, using his head. Joko there, I think, lost the side of the shuttle. He was moving in, and then suddenly stepped back. Eight fourteen. Service, Service return. A winner. Now, can he finish it off this time?
Good lift from a very difficult angle there, Joko. And again, it is a net which really beats the Chinese player. Certainly is, Joko, quite happy to get into those little exchanges at the net. We'll see what he does second set when we come back. Singapore Indoor Stadium, the decider in Group B of the round robin competition. Underway here, Joko Suprianto, ex world champion, took the first set against the player many thought was actually in the hottest form of any of those that have qualified here for the finals. Well, this is the time uh, we'll see again uh, a little shift in strategy. He was very content to play defensive. Uh, in the first part of that first game, as he tried to slow down the rallies, and uh, having won the first game, I think, Brian, what he will really try to do is not try to put the pressure on Dong Jiang by putting up the pace. And it's very nice to see him. He does it so effortlessly, so easily. He just moves on from one pace to another. I mean, if he can finish it off here, Jocko, that would certainly help his cause. He wouldn't really want this to go to three sets. That's right, and uh, he, I mean, he has not really played uh, any, any long rallies so far, so I'm sure that he's very happy at the moment, the way things are going. Well, I think that's the first time we've seen Jocko Suprianto make an error at the net. That's right, and in fact, he was so early there, I think that's one of the reasons that he did not know where to play that shuttle. Again, Joko looked up into the ceiling at the lights. Well, this has sort of been uh, happening since yesterday. And definitely there's something wrong, I think, with the lighting. Because at this particular stage, when they're looking at the shuttle, the brightness of the light also seems to be coming in. Of course, they've just changed ends, so Joko is going to take maybe a little while to get used to the lighting overhead. On the line. That was a brilliant rally. That had a bit of everything there. That's right. And in the end, the typical shot of Joko from the cross court side, and he will come in, wait for the shuttle, and change the angle to the very last moment there, and look at the accuracy. Just turn the face of the racket over as he hit the shot, just to give him the uh, surprising angle. And coming in very quickly. Setting it up with the first smash of the Dong John forehand, picking it off at the net. That's the setup, that's the kill. Well, in the last three tournaments uh, that Dong Jong has played, I don't think he has changed the shuttle as much as he's doing now. He's never really ang angled or in position to play the strokes that he wants to play. Shuttle always seems to be going away from him. Four one, Joko leads. One, one. Well, that's really is a very nervous stroke. Uh, he has seen his smashes come back. He has seen his drops being taken so very early on the net uh, that Dong Jong really now looks as if he's running out of ideas. Take it. <laughs> wow. 
what a rally. Luckford, Dong John, although let's give him credit, he went for that angle, just caught the tape, and that killed it as far as Joko Supriano was concerned. But I reckon that's one of the most sophisticated rallies we've seen in the tournament so far. That's right, in fact, uh, he had a chance earlier on, but uh, he was judging that uh, shuttle that came off his net stroke. Uh, but Brian, this sort of rally, uh, Joko would not like, you know, the longer the rally is at his age, and he really gets wary of playing them. time it goes wide. Now there definitely seems to be a bit of a drift from left to right look, as we're looking at it from, a, from our camera angle because that shot earlier where Jocko had to make a, a last minute adjustment, it looked for all the world as though that was going out. Oh dear, and it uh, sort of inched its uh, way inside almost a couple of inches. But last two rallies and Jocko is not getting a point and uh, both the rallies very long. And. Uh, Psychologically, I think it is good for Dong Zhong if he can uh, get Joko play these rallies. Service over. One, five. Service back to Dong Zhong. One, five. Lapse of concentration by Dong John. His mind was slightly on something else. Well, Joko very wisely taking time off there. He's gone out of the court, he's travelling himself. And uh, having a sip of water, I think, absolute right time. Because last uh, couple of uh, rallies have been very gruelling, very long. As he serves now at 5-1. Down the line smash followed in again by that beautiful deception from the cross court angle. There we see him down the line smash, full blooded smash, in fact, uh, well returned by Dong Jung. But just look at that second uh, stroke. Joko once again just looking back down at the line not quite sure whether that was going to go in trying to anticipate the slight drift on the court well this is one of the I think probably the only hall where they have the aircon on right through the matches at Senai in, in Indonesia they switch off the air conditioning and uh, they did the same thing in Thailand so I in fact I'm quite surprised that uh, this is being allowed here to keep the air condition on uh, as and the shuttle being so very light. Well, you can certainly feel it when it's actually quite uh, chilly in the, at the extremities of the stadium up around our commentary position. Well, that's uh, in almost uh, four inches inside the baseline there, Dong Zhong. Not very happy with the way he's given away that point. 7-1, very useful lead there for Joko. Great effort from Joko, Sanjay. Well, there was a late reaction there by Joko. He saw the smash very late. And uh, not enough swing in that racket to keep the shuttle in play. There we'll see that smash of Dong Jong. And the very late reaction of Joko. Oh, that's great. Well, Joko smiles himself because that's as hard as he's hit any shuttle. And in fact, the harder he seems to hit it, the better Dong John does on those uh, responses.
Well, Don Jung, when he's forcing these long rallies, he's taking the sting off uh, Joko smashes, and if he keeps on playing, I think that'll pose some problems for the Indonesian player. Though he's won this rally, and gets his service back. Great smash, both in the same angle. And the first my shot, Dong Jong returning it and moving on the far side of the court. And a very alert Joko just bangs it down on the same side. 8-2. There we see the low service. And the first return. And uh, Dong Jong there moving on to the other side and completely beaten by that angle splash. John John won the next rally with a smash down at his opponent's feet. 2-8, second set. Good change of tactic by Dong John. Shaping up for another big smash. Put no pace on it at all. being mopped up. A lot of sweat there. And uh, Joko clearly now is trying to rethink his strategy. And again, he's looking up. <laughs> I really wonder if he's uh, having the problem of that sighting, as we have been saying. And that nice stroke got him a very nice opening indeed, the middle of the court. With Joko there hitting into the net. And then looking up. Five eight, uh, Dong Jung just uh, closing in. I think the long rally is uh, doing a bit of damage as far as Joko is concerned. overhead lighting that uh, they have to contend with and uh, of course the key to it is is it absolutely identical symmetrical from one side to the other and as you can see there are on the uh, on this side there are fewer lights seem to be on than on the other and you've got those other lights in the Ida 4 which also may uh, cause a few problems Joko again uh, taking time off uh, uh, literally, I think he is uh, feeling the pace now. The longer rally is taking the toll on the 30 year old. He was leading 8 2 at one stage, and it's 8 6 now. Very loose shot from Dog John there. Absolutely, without any pressure, and Dong Jong, he was doing so well. 
And then suddenly he's given away two very unforced errors. Yeah, that was wide. Good call. Well, this is the sort of net exchange that uh, Joko was winning hands down in the first set. Narrow there, though, from him. That's a wonderful shot. Don John clenched his fist to the chair umpire. Didn't see that. I saw them. Actually, there are some chair umpires take more of an interest in that than others. Fisting, as it's called, is not allowed in badminton. Well, yes, that rule has come in lately, but personally, I think well, it's a very silly rule. I mean, a player trying to psych himself up, pump himself up uh, during a match, and uh, doesn't do any effect on the opponent. That's a wonderful smash, and Joko does a bit of fisting himself. I wonder what the badminton umpires would do if uh, Boris Becker was playing <laughs> with that sort of fisting. I think one or two of the uh, tennis players on the circuit would scare the life out of some of these <laughs> umpires. Big smash, Dong Jong, uh, always so well positioned where he goes for the high shuttle, but beaten again by the deception of uh, Joko. The backhand serve, this is what he was probably not liking, I think the service action is very fast and doesn't give much time to Dong Jong to get ready. The result there again, that quick service and uh, late play on the service by Dong Jong, putting the pressure on himself. 12-7. Again, he's made a mistake there. Again, he looks up at the light. That lovely net shot, very accurate, falling off the tape. And Dong Jung somehow managing to get it back, but very high. Well, very we should cheap. be able to see whether he actually reaches over the net here. That's wonderful. Well, probably did, didn't he? Probably did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> probably they should have a third umpire, uh, Brian, as they well, the cricket. Well, the chair umpire does almost nothing anyway, so uh, <laughs> when, he do, when he is called in to play, he gets it wrong. What, what's the point? And 13-7, he's got the psychological edge now in this match. And again, coming off from that uh, masterful stroke on the net. First shot, gets the opening and look at that. by Jocko really stretching the end in sight here at 13-7. He's already won the first set 15-8 and he would really love to polish this one off. Wins earlier 15-2 and 6 over Jeroen van Dijk from the Netherlands and then 15-4, 15-5 over the local man, San Tien Peng.
cleaning up the heat a little bit. Great cross court smash from the Chinese player. missed that one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether Joko is going to let Dong John back in this set. We actually had a discussion, Sanjay, with uh, with Vijay at the, the beginning of the program. We are talking about Rashid's match against Harry Antoabi yesterday. And uh, Harry Antoabi was 13-8 up against uh, Rashid Sidek. And uh, Sidek came back to win the game. And uh, we were saying, you know, Think about the sport. Would have Pete Sampras have let world, as world's number one? Would he have let that get away? Well, but in badminton we have seen this sort of thing uh, happening quite often. And that's the last point that Choco lost uh, again. Dong Zhang, middle of the court there, good jump to finish it off. But I remember one match, Brian. It was in I think 1980 World Championships, and uh, Lim Sui King, who was the All England champion that time, was down 114. And he won that game in the match. Of course, you can say in tennis there is an advantage because every other game you are going to serve. And if your serve is, if you've got a break of serve, you have a very good serve like Pete Sampras, the chances are if you're 5-2 up, you are going to win at least one service game. Of course, here the serve isn't such a big advantage. That's right, but uh, I think if I, if I remember correctly, Vijay himself was uh, two sets uh, up and three one up against Jimmy Connors, or it was Borg at one stage in Wimbledon. I think it was Borg. Uh, I think it was Borg. Yeah, and uh, he lost that match. Well, Vijay just pointed out that it was both. <laughs> <laughs> So he's quite used to, uh, in fact, he's lost two matches uh, after having huge leads. And here we see Joko, 38 up, uh, maybe a repeat of yesterday. Brian as Dong Zhong moves on to 11. Now, of course, Joko has to win two points in a row if he's going to, well, three points. Two points in a row if he's going to put another point on the board. Let's put it like that. Well, he should get his service back. That is the important thing for him. And he loses that one. He had the chance earlier on, but not enough in his smash and the Chinese player there keeping the shuttle very well in control body line game 12-13 well, this is getting really close and the crowd starting to get into this one it's been a great fight back by Dong John Well, that was a much better smash from Joko Suprianto, but he knew that that wasn't going to finish it off, and he was quick enough to come in, finish the job. Well, he's out of breath there when you can see him panting, so this is, uh, I think, probably his chance to move on to match point. It can be a very crucial service and uh, return from him. He's got an opening there, Joko, and he didn't leave it. Well, that's what you tell, you, you really taught the men from the boys that little bit of extra effort he's put into these rallies to try and finish it off and he now has match points and this will secure him a place in the semi-finals tomorrow lovely finish to that rally Brian very awkward angle but he just uh, upped the pace a bit finish it off Tactics to push Dong Zhang on the backhand. Oh, but Dong Zhang comes back. Dong Zhang was able to get under that and uh, take it on the forehand. Drives it deep, so we're not dead yet here. And there it is. Dong Zhang somehow managing to reach that. Look at that stretch. And then gets the opener for down the line smash. So saving his first uh, match point. Ah! Oh, he's got it, Joko.
absolutely at a standstill. The speed of those returns by Dong John just left him rooted to the spot. Well, there he is, completely beaten by the return. And Dong John again, fish in the air. 13-14. And Choco taking his time to get ready. clearly veering off on the outside sideline and uh, as Ryan has pointed out earlier on this draft in the court in the hall really playing havoc as far as Don Jong is concerned second match point to Joko 14-13 Sure, Joko thought that was it. Service back. for him, third match point. And the Joker really showing his class. Uh, he's a bit tired, but when it comes to attack and he's got the shuttle on the high side, he just keeps the pace on the shuttle all the time. Now we're talking about tactical toweling off. <laughs> uh, I think there was an example there at match point. He had, uh, what, two attempts already to try and finish yeah. it off, so he's just going to gather himself, getting the old muscles going. He's jumping a bit before that uh, service, backhand low service, obviously will keep the attack as early as he can. Played Joko. And body line return. Oh, wonderful <laughs> drop by Dong Jong. Lovely play on the net, uh, Dong Jong. Two smashes early on, being returned by Joko. And then he gets an opening on the net. Look at this net play here, that's a wonderful drop. And this time it's Dong John that clips the tape and drops it down in front of Joko. Well, this is turning out to be a great match. 13-14, we've been locked on that score now for a half a dozen rallies. Obviously, Joko thought that he's going to be pushed behind again. Then you see it come on that return of the smash. And Dong Jong very nicely, last moment, just turning it across the net. Opening up the face of the racket there. So now the chair umpire asks what sort of uh, setting procedure they're going to elect. Joko makes the choice. That's right, Joko makes the choice. And uh, it, uh, at 14 all it will be a setting of three points. see him must be thinking what went wrong here three match points won the first game 15 8 and then suddenly it's deuce in the second game service for Joko on 14 or it's uh, love all in the setting
Well, the Chinese coaches down beneath us on their feet, hands in the air as Dong John looks as though he's got himself out of the difficult situation and gets off to a great start here in this conclusion to the second set. Again, a long rally, and again, uh, Joko in the end uh, losing that one. And Dong Jong clearly in the driver's seat now, the tactics and strategy working very much in his favor. judgment there and that's what uh, made the late reaction to that return. Oh, and Dong John's just doing everything. Half the problem for Joko is that he can't finish the rallies with the, uh, the smashes. There's no sting in it at all. And Dong John starts playing the creative badminton. Well, that's right. I think it's uh, the long rally is in the middle of that game that really put Joko off. As he saw his uh, smashes being returned and his attack go really wide. And Dong Jong very cleverly coming back in with those rallies and uh, putting up pressure on the net as much as he could. Well, we're locked at a set apiece here in this decider of the Group C competition. There's a five-minute interval. We'll take a break. We'll come back to the Singapore Indoor Badminton Stadium in just a second. We'll be back. Be free. Third deciding set will be the fourth semi-final qualifier. Shot the Joko. Uh, I think the heat is really on as far as he's concerned. Uh, four match points in the second game. He lost that game. And the uh, first rally itself, very wide shot played outside. You may be interested, uh, Sanjay, and I'm sure the viewers will be. We had uh, Toto listening in on the discussion between Joko and the Indonesian coach during that uh, interval. And uh, apparently the suggestion to Joko is uh, don't initiate the attack because they've uh, realised that Dong john has got an excellent defence and his counter is very good. We mentioned that a couple of times during the commentary when Joko tried to take the initiative Quite often he was uh, caught out of position by the excellent returns from Dong John. So Joko has got to rally more with Do with uh, Joko has to rally more with his opponent. Now whether he's going to be able to do that, whether he's got the fitness, we should see. Two, one. Two, one. And uh, long rally that one. Mistake on the net by Don Jong. Three, A few more shots one. like that with uh, Dong Jong allowing the openings to come in very handy for Joko Suprianto. 
who once again has got off to a good start. He's had a good start in each of the three sets. I don't know whether it's just loses a bit of steam towards the end. There he goes again. And he's got him twice running with exactly the same shot. It's a good choice of stroke, that one. Uh, he slashes that board a bit so that it cuts off the pace as it crosses the net. Well, some easy points there by Dong Jong. And I wonder what his coaches told him. Because this is not the way that he should be playing after winning that very crucial uh, ending of the second game. And he's not ready there, he puts up his hand. And it'll be a let service. The danger in long rallies, of course, is that uh, Joko would not be able to recover as fast as Dong Jong, as we saw in that uh, second game. Do you think he, he played those closing points incorrectly? I mean, obviously he lost them, so you, you I mean, I'm not asking for the obvious answer, yes, he lost. Or well, was it a question of Dong Jong just really playing the better badminton at that time? There was nothing that Joko could have done. Well, I think Joko went to, uh, he was in fact forced into long rallies and he tried to attack too early. So that way his coaches are saying the correct thing, but uh, the longer the rally goes, Joko obviously the older one in court, and not as fit as Dong Zhang. Uh, he would not uh, like to be hustled into longer rallies. 1-5. It's on the line. And a little uppish looking smash there. Kept it very high. Landing almost at the second baseline. five and an easy point and Joko taking a little longer to really get ready for the services oh, that's a wonderful shot well that's the key for Joko when he does try to up the pressure you really get the feeling that he needs to be able to break through because if uh, Dong John starts getting them back he seems to lose his way a little bit that's a great smash. Looks as though he's going to go to Dong Jong's forehand. Well, Dong Jong Min well gets the service back. Uh, a very loose service by Joko and instantly punished there by Dong Jong. Well, very interesting that Joko had the shuttle first baseline, but uh, going for a very loose drop. <laughs> Dong John starting to work his man around. Well, the early part again, he had a good lead, Joko, but uh, was really pushed into long play. 4-1 at one stage. And now he's uh, middle of the court, uh, returns also not really inclined to smash. Joko getting a read on the flight of that very early. Judging it, uh, he knew it was going out. very fast there, a lot of anticipation was just lurking around the net as soon as you saw Dong Jong being pushed to the deep uh, forehand baseline there it is, that flick and uh, the Chinese caught on the wrong foot and look at that Joko just stepping in to finish it
Well, it was a good shot to try. But it's actually very interesting because you know you look you're watching this and you just think well can Joko hang on is he going to have the stamina to pull through well his body language is uh, wrong at the moment he's slowed down as he walks to his base position but Dong Jung somehow manages to get that shuttle back but very high and was on the floor as he saw it being hit down now we'll see that backhand uh, left on a nice drop rolling over the tape and Dong Jung nowhere near the shuttle and back live Dong Jung winning on another drop shot that had Joko really lunging desperately for the shuttle You still get the feeling that Don John is uh, in control here. Well, that's right. He's full of energy. I don't think that uh, the pace or the or this long uh, battle that they're fighting is really having all that much effect on him. In fact, it is in his favor. The longer he keeps the older of the two Joko Supriyante on court, the better are his chances to win. Drop again. You could clearly see the shuttle going off on the on the sideline there. It seems to be accentuated over in that backhand side. You know, it, 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 we, we've seen before it does affect the other side of the court as well. But it just seems to a little bit more of a current in that quarter. That's right. From Joko's side, actually, it is from left to right. Jong has now got it back to level pegging, six points apiece. Correction, five six. There it was, the smash, and uh, Dong Jong still looking full of energy. <laughs> Great hit on the body there, and Joko completely surprised by the change of direction, very last moment by Dong Jong, 6 all. I think he was getting those earlier. That's right, uh, the first game and middle of the second game he was very much in command on those uh, smashes. for Joko after a long time and still in fact I would say correctly persisting with the attack where he gets an opening and a nice uh, judgment there and as he changes court he leads 8-6 Joko needs no second asking to go over and have a bit of a breather but of course here they're changing ends when the first player reaches eight
Well, he'll take his time to come on the court, that's for sure. That he's coming back on this side. Takes uh, a drink. And Dong Jong really eager to start the game. And yeah, the chair yeah. umpire Philip Lee of Singapore suggesting that they might uh, now be ready to continue. Starting to work against Joko Soprianto now. There's the counter that the Indonesian coach warned the Joko of, but so no counter on that shot. Joko still leads 8 6. enough to the net to be able to get that steep angle smash it down towards the floor very difficult for the opponent to retrieve but it was the clear there not quite deep enough neither was that there's the kill really thumps it into the net into the uh, deck and again Still out of breath, but he's uh, somehow managed to keep uh, early attack moving in after service. Plays the first stroke uh, in deep corners and instant pressure on Dong Jiang. No expression on his face, uh, Joko 10 6. at the very last minute by a diving uh, Dong Jong and Joko had his chances in that rally as well as in the previous two when he came back in to get two points Joko was almost lighting up a cigarette as he uh, <laughs> played that last shot, having a little stroll over. But uh, amazing court coverage by Dong John. That was an unbelievable pickup. Uh, Great deal one. of skill in that. Still not finished. There we are. Thank <laughs> you very much. Tri <laughs> Makazi. Too quick for him that time, Dong Jong uh, catching the shuttle on the tape. Sudden change of direction, very last movement, and Joko really caught on the wrong foot. Yes, t uh, so that quickly in position that he was able to hit the shuttle before it dropped too much uh, from the level of the net. So it gave him a lot more angle. Again. Well, he has got to cover a lot more court there, Joko, and clearly that is the longest angle that he has to move. And uh, having problems. Seven ten. We 
we've got some of the Chinese doubles players sitting right down in front of our commentary box and they just uh, mimic the flight of the shuttle in the air and again reminding us that there's that drift from left to right. Smash, great badminton there by Joko. Very steeply angled smash is getting the openings for that uh, lovely finish. There we see it. Keeps this one down. Hits it across court. And displacing uh, Dong Zhong there for that finish. by Joko. Oh, that was way in. Three or four inches inside the line. Joko hoping that little bit of current, the air conditioning current might take it wide. Not that time. pace down the backhand side. With that shot there. And then the opening. Dong Zhong actually expecting another shot down the backhand. Good change of direction. 11-7 in the deciding set here. Well, I thought Dong Zhong had got himself back into that rally. Well, he tried to play that uh, backhand cross court this time, but uh, not so much control as he has been showing on the forehand side. There it is. Plays that across the court. Interesting to see Dong John selecting the option which forces Joko to move the most. So even though maybe uh, he's got other options that may finish the rally quicker, he's still moving him around. And although he's trailing 7-12, he must still think that uh, he's got a good shout at uh, winning this game. Came from 8-13 down, second set to win it. Joko had had a couple of big smashes that were returned. Well, I think there was an element of uh, desperation about the last one. And look at the fist and the clench. Dong John. Well, I think really fooled by the close. Uh, Mess of the shuttle going there near the line and Dong Zhuang in two minds whether to leave it or not. And 12-8, uh, Joko has been exploiting that particular backhand flank of Dong Zhuang for a long time to get his openings. Nice backhand flick there, last movement, uh, cross court return. Very difficult shot to play. Lim Chao Ching plays that quite a lot, the All England Ladies Champion. There it is. And just turning it across from the other side of the body. Great reach by Dong John. Opportunity. He looks back up towards our commentary position, not to uh, to ask the Chinese 
supporters and the rest of his teammates sitting just beneath us grimacing. Trove Jocko with a serve. Well, this is a very crucial part as far as Jocko is concerned and a good opening there. Oh, he's put it the net. And he misses this time. Middle of the court, hit it straight into the racket of Dong Jong. And then when he had a chance, instead of going for the spin shot, opted to put pressure on the Chinese with a body push and made a mistake. Service back to Dong John, 8-12. John looks back up to the players. There they are, one or two of them in that back row. The coach just off to the right. Nine twelve. Well, almost like the second game. Joko had long leads uh, there itself, thirteen eight. And this time he was leading 12 7. It's 9 12. <laughs> the smile there, you know, this again could be tactical, taking his time to settle down. beautifully. in the second set. Dong John managed to win it. Oh, he put that wide. A few loose shots. Well, a 13 lead seems to be jinx on this court. Haryanto lost yesterday and uh, he lost the match, in fact, and uh, Joko lost the second game from 13-8 lead. Pushed there, saw the chance there, uh, Joko, and a great finish. Very early on in that rally. On the net, lovely flick. Catching Dong Jung totally by surprise. The supporters for Joko getting into this now as he's on match point. He's got it. 29 years of age, too old. Not a bit of it. Taken to three sets by the 21-year-old, but he had the stamina, the resolve, and the know-how, of course, to come through and take it in three sets. 15-9, the score in the third set. Well, it has been a good victory here. He kept his cool, uh, knew that he was being pushed in long rallies, but ultimately the vast experience of uh, Joko coming right through. Certainly did Sanjay, so he's through. He'll play Ong Yu Hock in the semi-final. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back for a word in just a second.